Luke chapter 13, beginning at verse 6, where it says, Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but he did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on the fig tree, and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Let me say this, because y'all can only handle so much of this. In verse 7, the owner is critical. Critical. Because he says, for three years, I came looking for fruit, but none. For three years, I came looking for fruit, but none. Ha, uh, ha. Uh. Here is something to know that fig trees generally produce fruit starting probably at the third year, three to five years, they begin to produce figs. Notice he's not expecting it in the first year. He's not expecting it in the second year. But the owner knows that in the third year, we ought to have some figs popping off. Do you think God look at us like that? That, that, that we didn't been around church, some of us all our lives, and we still scared to read a verse in the public? We won't do a public prayer. We don't have any kind of spirit of discernment. And so here he is in the text that when the owner, he's critical because, look, he understands that, that this tree should be bearing fruit by now. Have you ever wondered how God see you? I know how you see God, but have you ever wondered how God see you? Huh? It, I'm wondering, do you think God sometimes is expecting more from us than we putting forth? Huh? And, and, and God is saying, haven't I been good to you? Huh? I was good to you in the first year when you wasn't doing nothing. I was good to you in the second year when you wasn't doing nothing. Look, I'm good to you in the third year and you still ain't doing nothing. And this is a year you asked me to give me a, give me a chance. <laughs> huh. you, asked, you said, give me one more year. To the third year, you know, you know, you say, I'm sure enough going to have a fig for you. <laughs> and he show up the third year and you still, you a fig tree. Just don't have no figs. You got a Bible. You got praying hands on your lapel. I like to I always like to mess with that church paraphernalia because we're in an age where we get all the paraphernalia. We just don't get God of the paraphernalia. We look the part. We just can't be. Huh. He said, I've been coming in three years looking. Huh? He's critical, y'all. Look, look at the judgment. The judgment is, cut it down. Y'all see that in that, my mind is an explanation. It ain't even a long sentence. 
Y'all see that NIV? Cut it down. It's all like, it's like he said, I've been coming looking. I've been coming looking. I've been patient. I've been tolerating. You know how some of y'all get, when y'all get fed up, you're fed up, right? When you get fed up, and you're like, look, can't, the pastor can't do nothing. You say, pastor, look, I ain't asking you to pray for him. Look, look, I'm not asking you to, no, we ain't got nothing to talk about. No, you can't invite me to your office with them. I'm, look, I'm fed up, and what I'm about to do right now, what? I'm cutting them off. Now, you can say I'm not Christian. That's your business. <laughs> But look, I'm done. I just hope God never come to this point with me. And I hope, I hope, you, I hope you put yourself in the verse. I, I hope God never get, feel that way when he look at me or when he look at St. John Baptist Church. I hope God never wake up one day because he never sleep. Look, I hope he never look at us and say, I'm done. Cut him off. Now, if he cut off the lifeline, <laughs> we dwindle away. Huh? We, we cease to exist when God stopped blessing. Huh? He said, here, here it is, y'all. He, he says, he says, uh, cut it down. Why is fruitless? Not because of the fig tree. It's a fruitless fig tree. Why cut you down? Not because you're a Christian. You are fruitless. Why, why he shouldn't bless some of us? We are fruitless Christians. I know y'all saying that's cold. He shouldn't say that. But this scripture is implying that God judges us. And at some point he will, when it's all over, he'll judge all of us. All of us have to stand before God for the, for the good and the bad we've done. But, but, but we, while we have the breath of life, we have an opportunity, what? To do better. He's only cutting it down because it's fruitless. It's useless. And because it's useless, he says, costing me. He says, using up the soil. <laughs> huh? It's using up <laughs> the soil. <laughs> it ain't bearing no fruit. Cut it down because it's using up the soil. <laughs> Boy, ain't that cold-blooded? That's what Rick James, if he today, he would say cold-blooded. Huh. Hmm. <laughs> huh, huh. It's useless. We're just using up God's blessings. God has planted us in good situations. Huh? You know, you, look, he, he, look, he has set us up to succeed in life. Like this, this world is God's vineyard. And if you are a child of God, he has set you up. He has set you up in the right soil for you to produce if you just focus on him. And not all the stuff around you, but just what? Keep my focus on him and not waste God's time and resources. Uh, uh, let, let, I, let me give y'all this one here and we out of your way. I like to serve the steward of the vineyard. I like they plate. He sounds like, like my savior. Huh? Yeah, I, I like, I like, I like his, his plea. Huh? Huh? It sounds like my savior because, because Paul, when Paul talks about himself, he says that he was a chief among sinners. Paul, Paul liked to say, what nobody a bigger sinner than him. But he recognizes the mercy of God. 
that me being a chief sinner can be saved. And not just saved, but be the baddest apostle of them all. I mean, most of the New Testament writings is Brother Paul. It's Pauline writings. The guy that came last, most profound. Uh, but he was a chief. He said, I persecuted the church. Not only I didn't go, I messed with people who were trying to go. But God saved me. Uh, <clears throat> we see the plea, the plea, the plea. He says, he says sir, he says, he says, sir, uh, uh, leave it alone for one more year. See, don't you sense grace right there? The grace, you see the grace and the, the mercy in that parable? Sir, sir, uh, leave, leave it alone. Look, you got every right to cut it down. Matter of fact, I, I got the knife. I, I, look, I got the hatchet. I got the saw. It's your vineyard. It's your fig tree. You have every right to order me to cut it down this minute. But I thank God for this, this piece in the parable because, because if you, you and I just be honest today, that, that there are times when what? You know very well that God, look, have every right not to give you and I another chance. Cut, look, cut the so-and-so down the way Big Mama might say it. <laughs> look, cut them down, right, cut them down, cut them down. Look, look, they've had every chance in life. I thank God that he's not like man. He's not like this world that, that gives up on us, that gives up on us. I'm glad that God is a God that gives us another chance. He said, he said, give, give it one more year. He said, he said, let me, he said, let me, let me dig around it. Let me, let me dig around it. Get, 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 look, look, get, give the tree, give the tree in me one more year, but, but I'm going to do something different. Uh, let me dig around it. Uh, there, there are probably three reasons, maybe more, but there are probably three reasons why fig trees don't bear frigs. Number one, if the tree is too young, if it's too young, it won't bear figs. Number two, it can be an old tree. <laughs> With all my old trees, wave at your boy if you're an old tree. <laughs> so that analogy preaches, huh? Old tree is singing that song the way we were. We remember when we had figs. We're in a season now where we want figs. We still want figs. We just can't get, we can't produce a fig. Y'all making me nervous. Are y'all still in the house with me? I hope my viewing are. Look on and wave at your boy. You know, hit me in the pop-up. Say, he talking to me. Look, I'm an old fig tree, so I, I cannot produce any what? Figs. Number three. Sometimes, sometimes it don't happen because a lack of water. There's a lack of water. And because there's a lack of water, yeah, the fig tree, yeah, won't produce uh, any figs. And that might be what he's saying. He's saying, let me loosen <laughs> up the soil around the tree. Uh, so water <laughs> can get down to the roots. <laughs> you ought to go on and just wave at your boy and say, go on and dig around me. Look, look maybe that's my problem. I, I need more water to get to the roots. Yeah, yeah, you know when it hasn't rained in a while, the earth get hard. <laughs> the ground gets hard. And when there's a downpour, there's more runoff. Your neighbors say, I need God to soak me this Sunday morning. I need soakage. I don't, I don't need runoff. I need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Dig around me, Lord, so the water can get to my roots. Help me, somebody. Yes, 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 yes. That's, that's what the Bible says, that it's word and spirit. It's what God told Nicodemus he needed. When he told him that, that you must be born again, he says, what is flesh is flesh, 
And what is spirit is spirit. He said, but if you're going to be born again, he said, you, you need the water and the spirit. Go on and nudge your neighbor and say, Lord, dig around me and fill me with plenty of water and plenty of spirit. Hallelujah, I'm in my seat. But, but the last thing, uh, yeah, he said, he said, I want to dig around it. He said, and I want to put some fertilizer. Uh, I want to put some fertilizer on it. Uh, and that made me Google fertilizer. <laughs> what, what is fertilizer good for? Well, it says fertilizer. It says, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it says it's natural or organic or artificial substance, he says, that, that's containing chemical elements that improve growth and productiveness of a plant. That, that, that the reason why we use fertilizer, because what? It improves uh, the growth. <laughs> yeah, the plant yeah, has a chance. Look, it sometimes can't go by itself uh, unless somebody what? What? Look, enhance it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Give it, give it a substance. Uh, yes, that'll help it grow. Uh, and then the second thing that fertilizer do is says that fertilizer uh, enhances uh, the natural fertility of the soil or it replaced the chemical elements taken from the soil uh, by previous crops. Oh, that shouted me right there. That whenever we involve in ministry, uh, uh, ministry is draining. Uh, and ministry can take what? Fruit from our lives. Uh, but that's why we need God uh, to dig around us. Uh, and fertilize us because God is replenishing us. God is giving us what we need to make us grow. And God has given us what we need to help our soil. Go on and wave at your boy. Say, Lord, help me. I'm the soil this Sunday morning that need God to put something in me to help me grow, uh, to help me be more uh, like Jesus. Uh, is there anybody up in here on this Sunday morning uh, that say, I wouldn't be here uh, this Sunday morning uh, if the Lord hadn't dug around me? Uh, I couldn't praise his name uh, if the Lord uh, hadn't dug around me. Uh, I couldn't shout the way I shout uh, if the Lord uh, hadn't dug around me. Uh, couldn't preach the gospel uh, the way I preach the gospel. Uh, if God uh, hadn't dug around me, uh, I'm the parent uh, I am today uh, because the Lord uh, dug around me. Uh, is there anybody up in here? Uh, is there anybody up in here uh, that say, if it had not been for the Lord digging around me, oh, where would I be? Oh, bless his name. I need God to dig around me. I hope you feel the same way. I don't want you to feel less than born again this Sunday. I want you to say, Lord, give me some of that. Give me some of that. Loosen up the dirt around me. Loosen up the soil. Loosen up the soil around me so your word and so your spirit can get down in my soul. What's that thing? He gives me joy deep down <laughs> in my soul.